We've talked about limits that tend to infinity. For example, a function with a vertical asymptote. As we approach the vertical asymptote, maybe the function behavior tends to positive infinity. But what about limits where we allow the input variable x to approach infinity? And then we ask the question of what's the function behavior? Let's take a look at the function 1 over x. If we want to know what's the function behavior as we allow x to approach infinity, we can visualize it on the graph. Watching a point travel towards positive infinity, we see that we start off above the x-axis and we inch closer and closer to that x-axis as we travel further to the right. And we can ask about x traveling towards negative infinity and how that function behavior behaves. We see that we start below the x-axis and we inch closer and closer to the x-axis from below as we travel towards the left. Now something to note here is that when we talk about a limit where x is approaching positive infinity, this is technically a one-sided limit. I can't approach positive infinity from both sides. It's just not possible. So it's technically a left-sided limit. And when we approach x heading towards negative infinity, that's also a one-sided limit where we're only able to approach that quantity from the right-hand side. You don't see those notations pop up for limits at infinity because it's implied. So it looks technically like we're using notation for a two-sided limit, but because we know that infinity can only be approached from one side, it's implied that it's a one-sided limit. Now talking about this function 1 over x, we were able to determine that the function behavior is leveling off at a function value of 0. So as we travel far to the right, our function value gets closer and closer to 0, and as we travel far to the left, our function value gets closer and closer to 0. Each of these limits is tending to the same value, 0, but they are coming from opposite sides of the x-axis. In this case, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, and our function is approaching it from above on the right side, but it's approaching it from below on the left side. And we can confirm this with a table of values. So not only can we evaluate these limits graphically, but we can look at a table of values as well. We pick values of x that grow very quickly, for example, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. And then we look at the function outputs. Notice that it starts off at point 1, and then it gets even smaller as we move towards the right. Similarly, for the uh, limit where x is going to negative infinity, we pick values that get negative very quickly. So negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, and negative 10,000. And looking at the corresponding function outputs, as we let x get closer and closer to negative infinity, our function outputs are becoming closer and closer to zero. They're all negative, telling us that it's below the x-axis, but it's still getting closer and closer to zero. Now that we know how the function 1 over x behaves as we allow our x to approach positive or negative infinity, we can evaluate limits that involve these terms. We're looking at the function 5 minus 2 divided by x squared. And we'd like to evaluate the limit where x goes to positive infinity, and then again where x goes to negative infinity. First thing that we want to do is rewrite our function so that we can see the 1 over x factor. So instead of 2 divided by x squared, we're going to rewrite that as 2 times the quantity 1 over x raised to the power of 2. That way we can apply our limit laws, and then we can see the limit of x traveling towards infinity for the function 1 over x, what we just discussed. Evaluating each of these limits, we see that we have a limit of a constant. We know that limits of constants are equal to that constant. It doesn't matter where x is heading, so that limit's equal to the constant 5. The other limit involves that function 1 over x. We know that as x is traveling towards positive infinity, that function is tending to 0. So the second limit would be 2 times 0 squared. And if we 
combine these using the difference, since our limits were being subtracted from each other, we would have 5 minus 0. So our limit for this function as x goes to positive infinity is equal to 5. What about if we were traveling to negative infinity? The process is almost identical. Start by rewriting the term so that we can see 1 over x, apply our limit laws, and then evaluate the limits one at a time. The first limit is still 5 because it's a constant. Our second limit is also going to be 0. Think about our function. As we're traveling towards negative infinity, we're still tending to 0. It was negative before it turned into 0, but that almost doesn't matter. So when we evaluate that limit, it looks like 2 times 0 squared. And then we compute the difference to see that the limit overall is equal to 5.